Mm-hmm. Uh, people said we were selling our own people. Yeah, now, that's another it, thing. It, it, it is so important to understand that this was a structured enterprise. It wasn't, so, you know, I want people to understand, it wasn't as if uh, we here had for sale signs over our people. Uh, they came, initially, the first boatload that Hawkins got, he kidnapped them off the About coast. 300. Uh, a whole slaves. boatload, 300 slaves, slaves. Yeah. 300 people. people. We were now enslaved, and he now sailed off with them and sold them in uh, Haiti. Yeah. And it was the profits from that. They were so huge. They now convinced them that this was the way to go. So more and more ships were now diverted into that trade. And now it became more sophisticated because the coastal peoples now became wary. Whenever the ships were coming in, they run further inland. But some of the ones that they had taken away, as always, there will be some who will be good workers. Mm-hmm. Some of those will be co-opted. Mm-hmm. They now have the language. They can go in and speak to the peoples. And they were sent in to reassure the coastal peoples that we're not after you. We're not going to touch you. Work with us. Head the guns. Gin, rum. Rum, gin, guns. So you argue that, I mean, this thing about, so um, our people, if, if our people had not been involved in selling their own brothers, nothing would have happened. So you argue that that's not, that's not accurate. Yes. You argue that they were manipulated, right? Mm-hmm. They were coerced to get into the business. Absolutely. That's your argument. Absolutely. I mean, it's a nonsense uh, narrative that was spun that we ran with because we had not done our own research. Well, what became interesting that was that when abolition came, and the book explains the real reasons for abolition, that it wasn't a change of hearts. It was a change of thinking. And it was a change of thinking forced upon the slavers by the Africans who had revolted, in particular, in Haiti. It was the Haitian Revolution that now made it clear that they can't sustain the trade any longer. And that's when they started thinking of abolition. And in the course of the abolition debates, because they didn't, some, the, the, those who were profiting from the system, because any political system has winners and losers, those who were profiting from the system weren't going to roll over and say, you take my daily bread away. They were resisting, they were holding on. And so the arguments in parliament were actually very revealing. One side arguing that it's evil, it's got to go, etc. The other one says, no, 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 we need it, it must continue, etc. And in the course of those exchanges, evidence spills out as to how the trade was really being instigated. And I remember one of the, uh, um, one of the prime ministers who said that, it is we who are instigating the trade. It is we who have the demand. It is we who supply the weapons for them to go and fight other groups and capture them and in order to supply our needs. Mm.